Hi guys, good day. This is me again, Sir Jiggs. And in today's session, we will be learning on how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So by the way, our topic factoring is divided into two parts. The first part are quadratic equations where its leading coefficient or a is equal to 1. But first, let's review. The standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 wherein a, b, and c are your numerical coefficients and your x is your unknown variable. I have a question. Where can you find the value of your a? That is in your quadratic term beside x squared. How about your b? Where can you find it? Linear term beside x. And your c? It's, of course, in your constant term because your constant are numbers without variables. Great. So the reason why I want this to be highlighted because your skills in identifying these values a, b, and c is actually very vital in learning our new topic today which is factoring. But first, what is factoring? So when we say factoring, it is the process of finding factors when multiplied will give us the quadratic equation as the product. Example, x squared minus 10x plus 21 is equal to 0. So the first thing that we need to do right here is to find the values of your b and c, considering that your a is equal to 1. So your b here is beside x, negative 10, great, and your c is positive 21. Awesome. So the next step that you need to do is to write the parenthesis because this is where you will write your factors. After that, write the factors of x squared in each of the parentheses. Considering that our leading coefficient is 1, so we can actually uh, factor it out easily. So x squared, it's like x multiplied by itself. So therefore, its factors are 2 x's. So you need to write x in the first parenthesis, another x in the second parenthesis. Okay, here's the next step. List all the factors of c and choose the factors when add up, we get the value of b. So this is the crucial part. So there are actually two conditions that we need to meet. So what is the value of our c? That is positive 21. Our b, negative 10. So our 21 will be the product, and our b is the sum. But first, let's take it uh, one step at a time. So what are the factors of 21? There are actually four pairs of factors. We have 7 and 3, negative 7 and negative 3, 21 and 1, negative 21 and negative 1. So that's the first condition. Second condition, we need to... Add up, meaning to say we need to get the sum of the factors. 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. Negative 7 plus negative 3, negative 10. 21 plus 1, 22. Negative 21 plus negative 1, that's negative 22. So which pair, which pair gives us the sum of negative 10? Only pair number 2. So that's the reason why the factors that we need to write inside the parentheses are negative 7 and negative 3. Alright? So negative 7 and negative 3. Question. Can we interchange the position of the factors? Can we write x minus 3 is first and x minus 7 second? Yes, you can. Because it, when you say factors, it's like 6 times 3 is equal to 18. 3 times 6 is also 18. So whether we interchange the positions of the factors, it will always give us the same product. Clear? Question so far? Okay, great. So we're not done yet. So since we're solving quadratic equations, we are pertaining to the roots of the equation. Since we already have the factors, the next step that we need to do is to apply the 
zero product rule. In solving a quadratic equation by factoring, it is actually based upon the zero product rule, which states, if a, b is equal to zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. Here are the factors that we had earlier. x minus seven, x minus three. If x minus seven is a certain value, in order for us to get a product of zero, then x minus three should be zero. If x minus three has a value, then x minus seven should be zero. Because zero times a certain value is zero. Or should I say, any number or variable multiplied by zero is zero. That is the reason why once you get the factors of the quadratic equation, you need to equate that one to zero. So x minus seven is equal to zero. So therefore, your x is equal to seven because you need to move seven to the right side of the equation. So from negative seven, it will become positive. Next, x minus three is equal to zero. Since the neg it's a negative sign and you will be moving it to the right side, it will become positive. So the two values of our x here are seven and three. Let's check if it, if it will satisfy the quadratic equation. For x is equal to seven, write first the original equation, x squared minus 10x plus 21 is equal to zero. We need to substitute the value of x by seven. So seven squared minus 10 multiplied by seven plus 21 is equal to zero. What is seven squared? That is 49. What is the product of negative 10 and seven? Negative 70. Then copy 21. Then equate to zero. 49 minus 70. Considering that our mean u end is less than our subtrahend, then automatically the difference is negative. So negative 21 plus 21 is zero. Therefore, x is equal to seven is a solution. Next, for x is equal to three. First, you need to write the original equation. Then we need to substitute the value of our x with, neg with positive three. Three squared minus 10 multiplied by three plus 21 is equal to zero. What is three squared? That is positive nine. Product of negative 10 and three, that's negative 30. Then copy 21. Then is equal to zero. Nine minus 30, minuend is less than, so negative difference. That's negative 21. Then you need to add it with 21. Therefore, it's zero because negative 21 plus 21 is zero. Therefore, x is equal to three is also a solution. So seven and three, or the values of your x seven and three satisfies, I mean, satisfy the quadratic equation. Therefore, both solutions are valid. Clear? Question. So here's another example. x squared minus 5x minus 25 is equal to 3x plus 8. All right, don't panic. I am here to help you. So the first thing that we need to do right here is to transform this equation into standard form. What is the standard form of quadratic equation again? That is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So in order for us to transform this one to standard equation, we need to move all the terms from the right side of the equation to the left side of the equation by performing the opposite operation on both sides of the equation. So therefore, we will subtract 3x and 8 on both sides of the equation. So that would be x squared minus 5x minus 25 minus 3x minus 8 is equal to 3x plus 8 minus 3x minus 8. So therefore, these four terms on the right side of the equation will be cancelled. So it would be x squared minus 5x minus 25 minus 3x minus 8 is equal to 0. What's the next step? Of course, combine like terms. 
So what are the like terms here? That's negative 5x and negative 3x, then negative 25, then negative 8. Or you can actually write this down where like terms are beside each other. Like this. x squared minus 5x minus 3x minus 8 minus 25 is equal to 0. Okay, simplify. So therefore, it's x squared minus 8x minus 33 is equal to 0. Negative 5x minus 3x, that's negative 8x. Negative 8 minus 25, that's negative 33. So therefore, we already now have the equation in standard form. So from this equation to this equation, both are, all, both are actually the same. So since we already have the equation in standard form, we can now identify the values of A, B, and C. So what are the values of our B and C? B, linear term, beside x, negative 8. C, that's negative 33. And A is equal to 1. That's given. Next is, draw the parentheses. This is where we write the factors. Considering that our quadratic term is x squared, it's so easy for us to factor. So you need to write x in the first parenthesis, another x in the second parenthesis. Okay, third step. List all the factors of c and choose the factors when add up, we get the value of b. Okay, again, there will be two conditions. So the value of our c is negative 33. And our b is negative 8. So we need to list all the factors of negative 33. So that would be 33 and negative 1, negative 33 and 1, 11 and negative 3, and negative 11 and 3. So next is we need to get the sum of the factors. So that would be 33 plus negative 1 is 32, negative 33 plus 1 is negative 32, 11 plus negative 3 is equal to 8, negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. So what is the sum? It's negative 8. So therefore, the only factor that has negative 33 as a product and sum of negative 8 are negative 11 and positive 3. So that's the reason why these are the factors that they need to write inside the parenthesis. So therefore, our two factors in the quadratic equation x squared minus 8x minus 33 is equal to 0 are x minus 11 and x plus 3. Is this already the answer? No, not yet. So since we're solving quadratic equations, we need to solve for the roots of the equation. So we need to apply the zero product rule. So we need to equate these two factors into zero. X minus 11 is equal to zero. So we need to move 11 to the right side of the equation. So from negative 11, it will become positive. So X is equal to 11. And x plus 3 is equal to 0, we need to transfer positive 3 to the right side. So x is equal to negative 3. So let's do the checking to double check if these two uh, values will satisfy the original equation. For x is equal to 11, the original equation is x squared minus 5x minus 25 is equal to 3x plus 8. So we need to substitute um, x to 11. That is 11 squared minus 5 times 11 minus 25 is equal to 3 times 11 plus 8. So what is 11 squared? That is 121. Then the product of negative 5 and 11, that is negative 55. Then copy negative 25 is equal to the product of 3 and 11, that is 33. Then copy positive 8. So the difference of 121 and 55 is 66. Then the difference of 66 and 25 is 41. And the sum of 33 and 8 is 41. So therefore, 41 is equal to 41. So therefore, when x is equal to 11, this is a solution. So x is equal to 11 is a root or is one of the roots of the equation. Next, when x is equal to negative 3. So we need to substitute that one to the original equation. x squared minus 5x minus 25 is equal to 3x plus 8. 
So first, we need to substitute the value of x with negative 3. That is negative 3 squared minus 5 times negative 3 minus 25 is equal to 3 times negative 3 plus 8. What is the square of negative 3? That's positive 9. Negative 5 times negative 3, like signs, so positive 15. Then copy negative 25 is equal to what is the product of 3 and negative 3? That's negative 9. Then copy positive 8. So what is the sum of 9 and 15? That is 24. Minus 25 is equal to the sum of negative 9 and 8. That is negative 1. So 24 minus 25 is negative 1. And it is equal to negative 1. So therefore, when x is equal to negative 3, it is a solution of the quadratic equation. So therefore, both solutions are valid. So any questions, clarifications? Anyone? So to wrap up this session, you're now able to solve quadratic equations by factoring where a is equal to 1. So again, the first thing that we need to do is to identify the values of your b and c, then draw the parentheses, and factor your quadratic term. The next is to list all the factors of your c and choose the factor that has the sum equal to your b. The next is to write these factors inside your parentheses and apply the zero product rule to solve for the roots of the quadratic equation. And finally, do the checking. So hopefully you learned something for today. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button below to receive notifications about my new videos. Again, this is me again, Sir Jiggs. See you in my next tutorial. Have a great day.